The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Hope you had a great weekend out there. Thanks so much for starting your trading day off here. And we pick things off. Quite the acceleration on Friday, right? You Boy, you talk about an acceleration, man. Things looking uh, especially rosy, approaching 1 p.m. Eastern time. And then you had quite a sell-off to the tune of more than 65 points. It was a rocket ship to the downside overnight on a Fibonacci basis. We got right back to about the 382. We're almost right back to that level right now, that sell-off on Friday. You got markets in positive territory. We have a small amount of S&P companies. I think we got nine S&P companies coming out this week as we're nearing the end of earnings season. And we got CPI data out Thursday, which will be a big economic data point. Beyond that, we got school starting in Florida, man. School started today today uh some schools starting wednesday we got orientation for one child today we got one child already in school that's starting today august 7th man uh so the summer pretty interesting we go forward most people have a good month left in the summer not florida man florida schools kicking it off today and we got markets in positive territory with the s p's right now up by about 19 points that's four tenths percent in the positive we're trading at 45 17. nasdaq 100 not quite back up to that 382 i think let's check it out didn't look like quite the bounce that the S&P was having. No, pretty similar. Check it out. Yeah, right at about the 382 of that sell-off from Friday. NASDAQ 100 up by half a percent right now. The Dow up three-tenths percent. And the Russell up by about four-tenths percent. Crude pulling back a bit. Quite the volatility last week. We spiked down to $79. We make it up to $83 towards the end of action on Friday. We're just under that number this morning at 82.15. Higher crude prices, though, right? You take a look at the daily. You're talking about higher prices, higher than anything we've seen going back basically nine months. That's going to start putting an impact on the headline number on the CPI. We get that number on Thursday. Just look at where we are from about a month ago when we had about a 67 handle towards the end of June. Everything in July was positive prices continuing that trend as we come into August. We jump over to the gold contract right now. Gold off about a dollar at 1974. Gold with some volatility recently, especially with the currency action going on. And we jumped to notes and bonds. You could say that was the story last week, even the last couple of weeks, right? Even the last few months, man. This pullback from 116, 117 on the dot to a price point on Friday before we surged higher, 109.24. Now we had the jobs number on Friday and things escalated. Pretty remarkable in terms of how this happened with where notes and bonds were versus where the market was right it was a one-way trip in notes and bonds man 830 volatility and then we trade to higher price and lower yield we claw back some of that last night but we're pushing the highs this morning right now and markets saw nothing like it remember the market rollover started at about 12 45 one o'clock in the afternoon pretty interesting in terms of how those came down that's your 10-year right now 111.04 you jump over to the 30-year you got the 30-year right now down about two ticks 121.27 nearing the price action we saw towards the end of friday as well you got to jump over to the dollar index as we're talking yields and bonds dollar index similar action right what's happening here when we're getting you lower yields we're getting a weaker dollar if you got lower yields you're gonna have less demand for the dollar to go after those yields that's the correlation right now. And what is happening? That's helping the market a bit. So the market right now is liking lower yields, weaker dollar, stronger market. s and is up by 20. You got the dollar index at 102. You back it up on the daily. It's been quite a run, though, from where we were about a couple weeks ago, man. You were down below 100. We drive up to almost 103. We're trading at 10204. So it'll be interesting to see as we go forward. We got about six weeks left until the next Fed meeting excuse me, in September, coming towards the end of the summer, of course, and it's going to be interesting to see where the data drives the dollar, drives yields as we go forward. We wrap up this earnings season, we come into September, we come into another Fed, and before you know it, we're going to do an earnings all over again. Now, a little bit bigger picture. We've been talking about the student loan payments, man. They start in two months. 
And boy, the more I keep thinking about it, right? Three to five hundred dollars from every single person that's paying those is the average. We're talking about, I think, twenty-seven million payers. It is an obscene amount of money, folks, that's going to be sucked out of the economy. I wonder if that's really going to start to hit things. I wonder if we come into the holiday season and it's going to be uh, kind of the perfect storm of events, right, in terms of really some of the lag hitting with the Fed, consumers getting hit on that front as well, and then consumers getting hit on the student loan payment front, uh, which really is going to hit discretionary income for those that that money mattered. And there's a lot of people, man, where 400 bucks, 300 bucks, 500 bucks a month, very difficult for that not to matter for a majority of Americans, to put it lightly. That begins October 1st. Remember, man, so you got people planning, I'm sure, as you come into August, September, right? Those first payments starting in October. If you're thinking about planning for the purse, uh, making plans, maybe you start tightening up towards the end of August, September, and you're really gonna have to tighten up when those monies start coming due uh, in October. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the final quarter of this year, right? We're only into August 7th, but September is next month, October, November, December. Those payments have started. We got three full months at the end of the year, and we go from there. All right, where else are we going? Let's check out the VIX as we kick it off this morning. Quite a spike on the VIX last week. We're off of the lows. Uh, we're at a level of 16.78, quite the spike on Friday to 17 and change. And we're just under that level this morning as we get a little bit of a lift in the market to 16.76. Yeah, so man, Dan in the den talking about the Tesla C CFO stepping down, chief financial officer. A little bit of negative action probably on that news right there, right? Drops about three bucks back to the lows of Friday. Um Elon and Zuckerberg, they're going to fight it out in the cage match. They're out there like two teenagers battling it out on social media over the weekend. Uh, I exaggerate a bit, but not that much. But yeah, CFO stepping down. Got to be pretty interesting running the finances of uh, a company for Mr. Musk. Cannot be easy working for him, I imagine, on many accords. Tesla, a little bit lower this morning. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we kick things off. Amazon, quite the acceleration last week, and they are going to be higher this morning as well with the market. We're up to 141. You're up almost 10% on Friday's action. Strong numbers for Amazon shares. Apple, a little bit of a different story last week. You're going to be, catch a lift with the market this morning to 180, 287. Now, think about it, man. This is how quickly things can roll over, folks, okay? Apple had a one-way trip, man, from January 1st. That trip is over, okay, at least for Apple. That was quite a decisive break. I don't even have to put the channel lines on this trend to show you where the trend is because it's so well intact in terms of where you were on January 1st. You were well defined all the way up to basically the highs coming into August 1st, and that has been a decisive break. Now, as our man Bud Rolfs used to say, love him, miss him tremendously always. He was the channel master. If you know him familiar, folks, did a show with TFNN, had a newsletter. He was all about channels, man, taught us all so much. And he would say it's got to test that channel. Boy, to test that channel on Apple. I mean, you got to get back up to almost like 195 to test that channel. Seems tough to do, but not impossible, even on the lower boundary, right? Maybe 194, something like that. And I'm even taking the acceleration this thing had in March. Not even cherry picking the lows of January, but pretty well intact channel line there. For Apple, you break decisively out of that channel line, and we're trading this morning at 182. Get back up there. You're talking about $12. We'll finish up this point when I get back. I was going to say, folks, you're already $16 off of the highs. $16 for a company with almost 16 billion shares outstanding. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Finishing up that conversation with Apple. We got markets in positive territory here. So Apple trading this morning at 182. You see the well-defined channel line, man. The entire channel, not even the line, in terms of the acceleration this thing had since March 2nd. What's so interesting here, you just extend that channel line to the left, and it pretty much kicks off from where you were on January 4th. You got a little bit ahead of itself. You back test that line, uh, and you're at 181. And the reason why I mentioned how quickly you could roll over the type of money we're talking about, man, 16 billion shares outstanding. Every $10 is $160 billion in market cap. And you're talking about $16. What are you talking about? Yeah, you're talking about $250 billion in market cap shaved off Apple in a heartbeat. Okay? That's talking about from where this thing was August 1st. It's not even a week ago. And you got a quarter trillion dollars shaved off a company's market cap. So be careful here, folks, uh, at some pretty lofty levels in markets across the board, some pretty lofty valuations as well. Trucker Yellow, they go bankrupt after debt labor woes pile up there. It's Y-E-L-L, -L, right? What's their symbol doing? Yeah, this thing's been on quite an acceleration, man, but you're going to pull back today at 216. Uh, there's probably going to be some liquidation value in this thing. Ever since they talked about going bankrupt from 43 pennies up to $5 last week, you were chopping around $4.50 on Thursday. You almost pushed that level on Friday this morning. $2 seems more feasible for that company. Uh, been around 99 years, unfortunately. Nearly 100 years. Yeah, I saw 99 on one of the other articles I was reading. Assets of $1 billion to $10 billion there. They got 12,000 trucks, I think. 30,000 employees. 22,000 of those Teamsters. Um, and yeah, they've been battling it out with the unions. Unfortunately, they couldn't do anything in terms of the unions, the company. Um, there's been a lot of concessions from the unions. That's what they're going to say going back the last 10 years. This company almost went BK in 2010, I believe it is. This is the journal article I was reading this morning. I had the Bloomberg article up there. Trucker Yellow files for bankruptcy. They're going to liquidate the company's chief, chief executive, says Yellow's closing after the Chapter 11 filing, costing some 30,000 workers their jobs. Um, and they got a lot of debt out there, man. Yeah, 22,000 position by the Teamsters. 12,000 trucks is what they have out there. Huge trucker did business with Walmart, did business with Home Depot. Um, they swallowed several rivals years ago. 
They got union concessions over the past 15 years. There were cuts in there as well, securing a government bailout in 2020. I think that was $700 million that they got that's on their books right now. Big acquisitions in the early 2000s, slow to integrate the business. But pretty interesting, right? These big companies, when they buy other big companies, man, they got to get it done quick or things happen. Um, yeah, in 2010, the company averted bankruptcy after the Teamsters agreed to take cuts in pay and benefits. So, you know, the devil's always in the details. The truth always lies somewhere in between, usually, especially when politics comes about. And whenever unions are talked about, politics is always going to come about. They're going to be in this conversation. Get ready for them. Uh, the Teamsters took pay cuts and in pay and in benefits in 2010. OK, so it's not like it's been a, a story of um, the car makers or something like that, where you had, you know what? We all remember the stories, right, of just rooms full of people that the car makers couldn't fire because of the, the contracts and all that stuff. Not exactly what's going on this time. Um, but the Teamster did block the company's proposed operational overhaul this spring, leading to lost business with customers and difficulties in refinancing about one point three billion dollars in debt that matures in 2024. Uh, yeah, so the battle has been on. Nonetheless, yellow, they're going BK. And I read in here as well that, yeah, since the 1980s, bankruptcy filings by trucking companies have virtually always ended in liquidations, even though most companies seeking Chapter 11 protection seek to preserve their businesses uh, as going concerns. Chapter 7 would be the full liquidation, but that's probably the way it's going. That's how truckers usually uh, go. The last failure of a large trucking company, 2019, uh, Caledon. Um, and less than truckload carrier New England Motor Freight. Yeah, Chapter 11 in liquidated. The strategy in such filings is to retain some control over the disposal of assets lost in a seven liquidation. So they, they file a reorganization, Chapter 11, but really that's just to give them a little bit more control. And when you're running a trucking company, it seems like the real deal there is... Um, if there's a path to reorganization, you would have got it done. Once you reach bankruptcy, it's basically a liquidation. All right, let's talk a little bit of crude. Yeah, we talk about it. We got CPI coming out on Thursday. All right. And that'll be an important data point, of course. Rising oil prices are bad news for drivers and the Fed. Now, crude prices are up more than 18% over the past month. You're going to see it at the pump, man. Uh, and I mean, we've been talking about it here, right? A lot of bright people have been talking about it, of course. There's your price of crude. People love to tout the headline number of inflation, and boy, it has been helped tremendously by the slide that oil has had for the last year. Since June 9th of 2022, man, we have been experiencing lower prices up until about the last month. Absolutely remarkable pullback we've had in crude. Of course, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, a huge accelerant of that but look where we are on the gas prices man national average 387 as we're coming into august usually a pretty big travel month final month of the summer even though we kick things off back in florida already uh but yeah we were pushing above five dollars on those war spikes the beginning of the war we were just under where we were at actually made it to a low of about three dollars and twenty cents but we're pushing four dollars right now folks um that's a rise of you know on a percentage basis from where we are Talking about more than a 20% rise in the price of gas there, that is going to start weighing on the consumer prices. Now here, consumer price index changed from a month earlier. You have the overall number in pink. You have the core number in brown here. And you can see the dramatic shifts that we've had to lower prices, but you don't have to go that far back to see how far overall was driven higher when you had crude prices spiking. And you may be coming to those lines again, man. Um, yeah, crude prices, as they say, will likely buoy overall price pressures heading into the Fed's next meeting in September when many investors expect a pause in interest rate increases. Not sure the Fed is going to blink over $82 a barrel crude, though. Not sure that's where they might start caring about the impact of that price on consumer prices because listen if crude's at $85 do you really think if chairman powell raises the interest rate to 5.75% that that's going to bring it down no that's not the way things work all right so yeah and you know it's a great point g bolts in terms of he says funny how energy costs are not really a component of cpi 
and it goes into all aspects of it okay in terms of they are a component but then there's core components that don't have as much variation and then where the fed likes to focus is on what their policies have an impact on okay and you can argue that and and i'm sure chairman powell not gonna speak for him okay and i'm no fanboy of his as in i think he, you know he's got a really tough job okay one way or the other man you can make the argument that he was late and inflation soared. Well, many people have said that it wasn't going to come back down, and it has, okay, to some degree. Uh, but what they want to do is they want to have an impact on the prices. And crude, there's so many other variables besides fiscal policy like that, that monetary policy, I should say, that they're just not going to matter as much when it comes to rate hikes, which is where the market really is concerned most of all, I think. All right, folks, markets in positive territory. S&P's by 18 in the green. We're coming back for the open. Stay tuned. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF nn.com Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got a little bit of a lift in the market. You got the S&Ps right now climbing to the overnight highs. That high, 45.22. We're just over that price level at 45.22.75. We're just above the 382 of the pullback on Friday's action, trading at 45.23. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 101 points. That's two-thirds percent. 
just under the highs we had pre-market at about 3 in the morning. Dow up almost 200 points, well above where we were pre-market, 35,349. The Russell gives it up on the open. Russell, the weakest index right now, only up by about 110%. You see the sell-off the Russell had. Let's put this back to a five-minute chart just so you can see the open there. A little bit of a sell-off of the Russell pushing the overnight lows versus the Dow catches a bid to a certain degree, 35,365. NASDAQ small bid and the S&P small bid as well, man. Relentless market still sitting at 4522. Uh, a literal stone's throw away from all time highs. Pretty remarkable across the board. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we kick things off. Amazon shares. They give it up a bit with them only up about six tenths percent. They were pushing a little bit higher on the open. Apple shares. They give it up as well. Down four tenths percent. Right. Look at that. Apple negative today on a positive market day. You jump over to some of the other magnificent seven Google shares up by eight tenths percent. Microsoft shares up by seven tenths percent this morning. We jump over to NVIDIA. They catch a bid up by one point five percent. We talked about Tesla, the CFO stepping down. They trade lower. They claw back some of those losses. Tesla only down by about four tenths percent right now. All right. What else do we got going on? Let's talk about, uh, yeah, this one's an interesting one from fast food. Giving up on dining in. So McDonald's, Burger King want big investments in eating areas, prompting pushback from franchisees. Franchisees don't like spending money, folks. You know, and I'm not, I'm, I, listen, that's a business owner, okay? Especially when you're told by corporate, right? Because many times they are managing a budget like any small business um, a franchisee look at this channel in, in McDonald's and be careful here man we talk about channels all right talking a lot about channels that's your three-year weekly let's see that's your five-year weekly look at this I keep going back look how well defined this channel line is man okay this is going back five years you got out of whack during COVID let's back it up all the way yeah basically been in a well-defined channel line since the lows of 2015 man not exactly parallel. You could probably shift this up a little bit. Maybe you get some parallel nature there. What degree? But you get the point. Uh, we are trading off of that level. You've done it on a couple occasions. Almost hit the top when you started that channel in the beginning of 2018. But coming out of COVID, nonetheless, McDonald's, okay, they are positive by three quarters percent today. And I found this article interesting because they're talking about how much money they want people to spend for dining areas that nobody goes to basically right now. Americans are eating their burgers, fries, and nuggets at home, in their cars, at the office. Uh, when's the last time you, you saddled up to the fine dining area of a Mickey D's? I can't remember. Decades. When's the last time I had McDonald's? Probably stole some chicken nuggets from the children within the last week or two that we got at the drive-thru. Okay, I'm not the only one. Less than 10% of visits in most U.S. McDonald's restaurants are dine-in customers. Surprised it's actually even 10%, okay? Now, I know sometimes the kids, there's a Chick-fil-A around here that's got a nice play area. I think there's a McDonald's that's got a play area. That's what I remember, man. I remember going, do you remember when, talking about the 80s, man. Remember the 80s? Listen to me. Uh, remember when they had so many great, cool play areas built into the McDonald's and all that stuff? I used to love it, man. Um, nonetheless, that's the only time it actually makes sense in my head that you hear that. People going to... Uh, McDonald's, whatever it be, they have a play area, especially if they have one inside, because in Florida right now, folks, it's uh, extremely hot in August. I don't complain too much. We got it made. All right. You just got to be by the water or something if you're outside or have some air conditioning. Across U.S. fast food chains, diners ate 14 percent of orders at a restaurant in the first five months of this year, less than 21 percent before the pandemic. It's a 33% decrease if you're playing percentages on percentages, which is always a little bit deceiving at times, but nonetheless, quite a drop. In June, diners ate 14% of their fast food orders at the restaurant's dining area compared to 22% in 2015. Just massive shifts in our uh, life in terms of how we go about our life and the shift toward uh, basically drive through right? Or online delivery to that degree. Now, you don't need big dining areas, okay? But McDonald's and other chains are developing new restaurants centered around drive throughs and carry out with very little or no dining option. But here's the kicker, man. Still, fast food restaurants are 
excuse me, reluctant to give up on the dining room. They want their restaurants to look modern, inviting, and fresh. McDonald's, they pledged pledged to spend billions of dollars to help U.S. franchisees pay for digital kiosks, modern furnishings, and other improvements beginning in 2017. They now expect U.S. owners to renovate dining rooms every 10 years. That's a fast one, man. Every 10 years. Duncan Steve, perfect, man, hanging out. Listen, well, you're going you're gonna to have it made, man. Mickey D's, they're, they're going to be some fly. And it, listen, on a longer-term basis, okay, you see how do you remember when all those McDonald's was dilapidated? Right, Steve? You must, man. So our man Duncan, Steve, Mickey D's, Tommy, he says, I'm 64 and I go there once a week or two uh, for the Wi-Fi and a copy, coffee. No people in there, really. And what's so interesting, though, do you remember when they were all so outdated, man? When they were just the only – that's really where, like, the tail end of those big play areas, right? You had the play areas. They were everything super dated. And what did they do? They came in. They forced the franchise to update. Uh, McDonald's generally look super modern these days, and they've overtaken that stigma of being this trashy old fast food place. So you see the benefit of it, but they want them to spend about 300 to 350 grand every 10 years on renovations. And folks, let me tell you, man, you know it, 10 years flies. Can't believe how fast it goes. And after 10 years, stuff can still look okay. Okay, that's where things get interesting here uh yes you want to keep it fresh but i could see how there'd be some pushback when you're spending 300 grand every 10 years to basically redesign the inside of your restaurant and they talk about here they've got to throw everything else out that's basically what you got to do now these are coming for you okay the kiosks all that stuff yeah you better believe order and pay here don't talk to a real life employee um mcdonald's has been on a tear the real estate play is real as well Burger King spending millions of dollars to encourage U.S. owners to renovate their locations as well. But what I found so interesting here is that you're talking about 350000 and a full update can be as much as seven fifty. But probably if you're on the ball and you're pushing it every 10 years, you're talking about three hundred to three hundred and fifty grand per a franchisee. That's the money they're putting in, that they're expected to freshen up their dining rooms, front counters, and bathrooms uh, with approved designs every 10 years. So McDonald's not messing around, man. Uh, longer term, as an investor, probably a good thing for that brand, for that company, because you just see what happens when it goes to the wayside. But as a franchisee, you can understand there'd be some pushback, man, when nobody's coming inside. And basically, it's probably more of like a brand issue, right? You want to have them be the fresh company. You need everything up to date, even if nobody's coming inside the store. And they're probably right. Nonetheless, Donald's doing well. Market's doing well. S&P's up by six tenths percent right now. NASDAQ. Up by about half a percent. Dow charging higher, catching a bit on the open. Up by eight tenths percent. Stay tuned, folks. We'll take a look at some of the other equities. Moving this morning, we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe 
to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. s and is holding on to gains up by 21. NASDAQ uh, 100 gives it up a bit. You get a little bit of a pop. We sell off. We're only positive by about three tenths percent. Dow really catches a bit there, up by 35,380. And we get the Russell flat at 1966. We jump over to Tyson. They're having some problems, man, with their numbers down by 9.2% for Tyson. And we jump over to Tyson. Come on, where are we? There we go. They're going to close four plants as chicken business slumps. Meat processor, $417 million quarterly loss, lower sales. It's a tough business going on right now for Tyson, man. Uh, a loss of $417 million, that's $1.18 a share. That compares to a $750 million profit a year earlier. Quarterly revenue declining, 2.6% to $13.1 billion. The results were lower than what analysts had expected. Uh, they're down in the pre-market. They're down 35% over the past 12 months. You have a shrinking supply of cattle driving up the price that meat packers such as Tyson pay to secure that livestock. You have a glut of chicken and pork on the market. And lackluster consumer demand have been weighing down wholesale prices that resale, uh, the retailers and restaurants pay. They're trying to cut costs. They're going to shift production from four of the chicken plants to other facilities by the middle of 2024. And this is where I write... You see things like yellow where they say they were slow to implement um, the changes when they would acquire a company and combine those companies. It's remarkable how long it takes these companies, right? It's going to be a full year. They're going to shift production from four chicken plants to other facilities by the middle. And listen, I'm not I mean, I can't imagine the logistical deal to shift four production plants out of business, take all that business, put it into other areas. They estimated the total charges of three to four hundred mil million related to the closures declined to say how many workers would be impacted. That's basically only a loss for them. Right. Uh, but in May, Tyson shut down two chicken facilities in Arkansas and Virginia, laying off roughly, roughly seventeen hundred workers. So if they shut down two, it's seventeen hundred. They said in April they're going to eliminate 15 percent of its senior leadership positions, 10 percent of the corporate roles. They're really trying to trim it, man. And uh yeah, not the numbers they were probably looking for. We take a look at a longer term chart back to the depths of COVID yet again. And the only thing I will say is if you love this stock at 100, you're going to love it at 50, right? Yeah, tug and cheek to say the least. We back it up on a big one um, monthly chart. And yeah, you are back to, let's see Fibonacci basis where this thing is back. Been quite a pullback. And Tyson's going to be fine, folks. Okay, chicken's not going out of business. Chicken's one of the healthiest things you can eat, folks. It really is. Great source of protein. A lot of times, not a tremendous amount of fat. Fat can be healthy as well. But chicken, uh, you gotta you gotta give it some good spices or some good marinade. The only thing about boneless, skinless chicken breasts, super healthy for you. A little bit bland. That's why you get no fat in there. You get those thighs. They got a little fat in there. Maybe uh, chicken, very healthy for you. Interesting because if you watch the program, I think it was a month or two ago, right? I was talking about how beef is in such a problem and how everybody's eating chicken and no one's eating beef. 
Well, the only thing I'll say is uh, those trends have been in place. And the market has shown some of those trends because you had Tyson chopping around 10 to $20 over the period of 2003 to 2012. And yes, you're back to 50. Okay, things got a little bit out of whack, I think, at the COVID highs, etc. Nonetheless, uh, seems like they're trying to right th that ship, taking their licks right now. And yeah, maybe that's an area you start to scale in. If you're looking for a position, if you're a short-term trader, at least you get your back against the wall, man. $50 looks to be on that chart somewhere where it has some level of support. Doesn't mean you won't get below it. Just in May, we were down at 47 uh, But nonetheless, as you see, back to basically that area of $50 for Tyson on weak numbers for Tyson. And they're trying to right that ship by short um, closing plants, saving money, et cetera. All right, what else do we have going on? Well, folks, a week from today, we got our man Teddy Kegstat. And this reminded me, like, I'm, I'm looking at candles, okay? And, you know, Teddy had talked about, when we were talking about this last Wednesday, when he was talking about this webinar coming up a week from today, August 14th, 4 to 5 p.m., it'll be a 60-minute webinar. It'll be live. You'll be in there with Teddy. This is a standalone webinar, folks, okay? So you're not signing up for Teddy's Tiger Forex report. You're not signing up for a recurring script subscription. The cost is $97. It will be archived. And Teddy's going to be talking about candlestick patterns for stock and option strategies. You can click on the front page. You can read about what he's going to be talking about in there. Okay. And talking about what patterns he uses for stock, stock and option strategies in today's volatile trading environment. See how to implement various trading strategies based on the patterns that develop in the market. They can be applied to stocks, ETFs, and options. Uh, using these methods, maximize your trading capital. So these patterns, Teddy's written a book about candlestick charting, folks. And, you know, sometimes it's the basics that really are the most important thing that you learn. And I, I remind myself of that a lot. Uh, we've been talking about channels a lot today, right? Channels are some of the most powerful indicators out there. And everybody, it seems like, uses candlesticks these days because they graphically and visually represent so much data. And that's the cool part about so many formations on a candlestick is that the reason why the formation makes sense is because it's a visual representation of supply, demand, data, market behavior. Uh, so check that out. It'll be $97. You can sign up. It's a week from today. It will be archived. I expect we'll have a good turnout there. It'll be live in the Discord room. Uh, so that'll be good. We talked to Teddy, of course, Wednesday at 40 past the hour. So we'll talk to him in about 48 hours from right now. All right. What else we got going on? We talked about Mickey D's. We talked about Tyson. We talked about trucking. Um, yeah, we got property loans. How about it? Well, let's take a look. They're talking about AMC in the den. And yeah, you talk about a high risk trade, right, Dan? Uh, a little bit of volatility today, up to 519. You're back to 506. The news out there, Barbie's done a billion dollars. Not bad. Take a look at the longer term chart, though, man. Whew, you're up by 2.5%. I don't know. It's interesting to see how this business goes forward, right? That's a daily for you. You were down at, what, four bucks on June 23rd. You're up to 506. And as you said, something about risk, right, Dan? Rightfully so. Um, yeah, because for the risk tolerant, yeah, another solid box office weekend, AMC. And it has been. You know, that's quite a number for Barbie. You got Oppenheimer out there as well, some of the biggest numbers they've seen recently. But boy, this chart's looking a little skittish, even for all that. Now, you jump over to Warner Brothers Discovery, Barbie's their movie. They've had the acceleration off of their numbers as well. You're up to 1420, basically flat this morning, even though you have a positive market, right? There are bigger fish going on than one movie, man, or one weekend in this whole industry is my take on things. I mean, you jump over to AMC right now. You jump into the earnings tab. Is that right? Do they have their numbers tomorrow? Is that right, Dan? Maybe they do. August 8th. Do they? Let me see. Yeah, they're not out yet. They're going to have their numbers tomorrow. So AMC's out with their numbers tomorrow. And they are a $7 billion company right now. Really interesting to see if anybody goes for the brick and mortar play that's that's online. You probably wait for them to go BK and pick up a few theaters. Imagine. Imagine you let them go BK, right? And then you try and go in there and buy the cream of the crop. 
in terms of maybe you try and segment out what you're buying. Maybe you don't want all their theaters, right? Uh, as opposed to paying $7.5 billion for that business right now. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 22 points, pretty much just shopping around where we started the program off at. We're up by half a percent in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, a uh, little bit weaker maybe than the S&P. Pretty similar, though. They're both up by about half a percent. Strength in the Dow, weakness in the Russell. Dow catches a bit up by 7 tenths percent. Russell catches uh, an ask, you could say, catches a sell as they're in negative territory. Only major index. You got crude right now. Trading a little bit lower during the session as well. Crude pushing the pre-market lows of 81.82. So much for $82. We were at 83 overnight. You trade through 82. We're at 81.82. You jump over to gold. Gold off about $5 right now at 19.71. Great day to try out a subscription to the gold report, folks. My dad puts out new issues on Monday morning. Check that out, of course. We've had some action in gold. You jump over to the dollar index right now. Dollar index. Pulling back from the highs, we had pre-market 102 and 09, basically right near 102. You jump over to yields right now with the 10-year negative by two ticks, trading at 111.02. And yeah, I mean, we could jump around. I got a couple more articles out there. Interesting, this one I was reading this morning from Bloomberg. 
And it's talking about the government shutdown threat builds in post downgrade fallout. So you got the Fitch downgrade, of course, the Fitch ratings downgrade to double uh, A plus, right? Is that how you call it? Double A plus. And what's that going to do? Well, that's going to push. Uh, it's going to embolden potentially. OK, that's the word they use in here. And I like it. Uh, Congress left for an extended August recess without resolving simmering conflicts, conflicts over spending. And what do they got? Federal funding runs out after September 30th. Yeah, so we got another cliff looming out there. And guess what, man? Politics, they're coming. How's that going to change things, right? We got a presidential election in, what, 15 months? That's like tomorrow in the world of politics, man. It's already kicking off as we knew it. We'll see where that goes. Uh, keep your eye, folks. We got CPI on Thursday. That'll be an important one. We got crude prices back under 82 bucks, but crude's seen some strength recently. Check out Teddy's webinar coming up a week from today. And have a great Monday, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chap. He is coming up live next. Steve Rhodes at 11 o'clock. Fast Market at 12. Our man Larry Pesavento live at 1. My dad, Tom O'Brien, live from 3 till 4. Appreciate you starting your trading day off with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got the S&P in positive territory. We got Dow strength, Russell weakness. Have a great Monday, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for Basil.